Tonight, we have a, I, I don't want to, I'm not even going to call him a guest because he's a friend of this church. He's family. Uh, David Perkins has been a close friend and has ministered here at Radiant Church in Kalamazoo for the last 17 years. We were doing the math. He's been coming for 17 years. And uh, we love David. We love his family. He has his incredibly handsome, young, tall son, Dawson Perkins, with him. I remember when Dawson was born, and uh, it's incredible to have him in the front row. He's a great young man, great young leader in the making. And he, uh, David and his wife, Renata, are the pastors of Radiant Church Kansas City. Let me just tell you something about David. David is uh, not just a pastor. David is a unique voice that I believe wholeheartedly, not just because he's my friend, but I wholeheartedly believe and honor this, that he's a once-in-a-generation voice that God has raised up to call the church to the place of prayer and a lifestyle of consecration, especially young people. Uh, he has led multiple different youth conferences, national conferences throughout the last few decades. Uh, most recently, he's launched a new, he's in the process three years of planning a church, and he decided, I'm going to start another youth conference. And uh, it's just blowing up. It's called Bold. Our young people go to it. And uh, we love having David Perkins here with us. And so I want everybody, if you would, no matter where you're at, would you stand up on your feet? Welcome to the platform, David Perkins. Ah, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's an honor and a joy to be with you. I love Radiant, I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, thank you for that warm response. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, such an honor. I so love you, Pastor Lee and Jane. Thank you so much for your friendship. Uh, thanks for being a big brother and mentoring me and helping me and speaking life into me. Uh, you guys have probably the best pastors on the planet, so can you give your pastors a big hand? I love you. That's pretty amazing. Uh, it's just a joy. I feel like I'm home. Uh, there's so many of my friends that are here uh, that are on your team and in your church. And so to be here is like coming home and such a delight and such an honor. Um, I wanted to show you a quick picture of my family uh, because... Uh, we are loving Kansas City. We started Radiant Church Kansas City, and we're still alive, everybody. Not dead yet. And so um, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, uh, I came here, and um, you guys helped us significantly launch the church in 2016, and it's going well. And so I bring a good report. My family uh, loves God still. Thank the Lord. And my kids are good. And this is my son, Dawson. Dawson, you want to stand up real quick? And that's my boy, Dawson. Mm -hmm. He is five foot 11. What on earth? And so uh, we went to my wife's side of the family uh, Christmas, and he was the tallest one there, like taller than his uncles, taller than his grandpa. Then we went to my side of the family. He was the tallest one there. I'm 5'5", five five, everybody, and everybody asked, how did this happen? And I just said, mm, I pray, baby, I pray. It's my prayer life. <laughs> Lord Jesus, to the next generation. If you're gonna skip me, just give it to him, God. So anyway, I thank God for him, and uh, he's, he's, he's actually a great preacher, and so uh, he's been preaching in our youth ministry, and so glad that you're here. I just wanna say to Portage, um, hey, I love you, Stefan and Candace, uh, so much. I've known Stefan since he was 17 years old, and uh, you are an incredible leader. Love, Candace, and uh, let's just give it up for Portage and Stefan and Candace Davis. Uh. We love you. What a great leader. Stefan was a cut above when he was 17, and he's been a great leader uh, since he was a teenager. And so anyway, such an honor uh, to be here. Anyway, there's so much love that I just can't stop. Uh, but I love you very much. Uh, got a word on my heart tonight. Uh, really excited about this season. Uh, it's called Seek. And you didn't come tonight uh, for a song, and you didn't come for a sermon. You came to seek God. And I just want you, if you will, will you just stretch out your hands like this? I want to read out of Revelation 5, and uh, I'm just going to read this verse. This is uh, 
just this vision here in, in, as, as John sees, and I just want this to get in us. Tonight, I'm, I'm aiming at your heart more than anything. I'm hoping that we have an encounter with God. Revelation 5, 11, he says, then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Father, we tonight got here in Richland and the Portage campus and everybody online, God, in this season of seeking God, God, we come before you tonight and we just say, you are worthy of it all. You're worthy of our affection. You're worthy of every dollar. You're worthy of every minute. And God, tonight we ask that you would open up our eyes to behold Jesus. We just confess we live in a culture where we behold so much. Our eyes stare at screens perpetually. We've got so much in front of us, just the buffet of options. And God, tonight in this season of prayer and fasting, we just look to you tonight and we just want to declare what's already being declared in the heavenly scene. Worthy is the lamb. God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would help Lord, our affections can just catch up with our convictions that you're worthy. God, we pray that our lives would embody beholding God. God, we ask, Lord, as we sing these songs so fervently, we ask, Lord Jesus, that we would encounter God in such a way that we live these realities. Holy Spirit, would you come and would you help us open up our eyes to behold more of God. Help us here as we, as we look at the scriptures and as we sing again at the end, God, we ask for an encounter with God. I ask, Lord Jesus, that as we sit and spend time in our recliners or in coffee shops, or as we open up the scriptures alone with you during seek, that we would behold you. God, as we turn off ESPN radio and we put earbuds in and Listen to the word of God or listen to worship songs. God, as we open up the word of God, Lord, we ask, Lord, that the weightiness and the worthiness of Christ would just, would just fill our lives. God, we pray, Lord, that you would work supernaturally. God, help us. God, we love you. We honor you. And everybody said amen. amen. A few years ago, I uh, was in Istanbul, actually with Stephen Davis and it was January of 2016, and um, we took a bunch of young adults to Turkey, and we were there doing missions work, and, and one of the leaders came up to me and said, hey, David, there is a lady here in Istanbul, and she's been here for over 20 years, and she has a great work here in Istanbul, and, and she says she knows you, and and I literally, before they said a name, I, I, I just began to think, I have no friends in Istanbul. I can't even spell Istanbul. I have no idea where I am. Like, I just, no, I, I don't think I do. And, and then the guy said, well, her name is Kay Zahasky, and, and she said that she knew you when you were a teenager. And I go, oh my goodness. Yes, yes, I'd love to meet her. I'd, I'd love to connect with her. And, and when I was a teenager, like when I was in high school, I was, uh, I was a little zealot for God and leading prayer meetings. And there was this, this leader that she was from another church, but she was passionate about missions and she was in love with Jesus. And I think she was in either her late 20s or early 30s. When you're 18, you think anybody over 25 is just ancient. And so she was just, you know, in a category over 25 to me. But she, she was so intense for the Lord. And I remember in those years when I was this teenager that, that she would talk about how one day she was going to go to Turkey and how she had this passion to go reach unreached people and people who were in the darkest place and didn't hear the gospel. And, and I was just teenage kid, mullet, braces, Oklahoma, dear, 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 dear. I mean, that's who I was. And 
she kind of seemed educated and she was working on a lot of education in order to impact Middle Eastern culture and, 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 and she just kind of seemed like an intense person and she would always ask me holiness questions and so I was, you know, like a little, uh, just a little afraid of her because she was so intense for God and, and I hadn't seen her in over 20 years and, and so I'll just never forget, I left my team and, and I, I met her at this cafe and she brought one of the other pastors with her and so I knew it was gonna be three of us there and she's sitting at this cafe in Turkey and I walk in and she's larger than life personality and she hugs me and David how you doing of course she talked about Jesus really quickly and she said I'm so glad that you still love God I said I still love God I'm still alive I'm same height but I love Jesus and got a wife and I told her about Renata she didn't know about Renata and I told her about our four kids and she wanted to make sure I had good doctrine and she wanted to make sure I really still loved God and I was like I promise I'm still I still love Jesus you know and I'm telling her stories about what's happened over the last 20 something years and and she's telling me stories about what's happened in Turkey and and honestly I, I mean it was just it was so powerful as she as she began to just tell me the intentionality of what work had taken place in Istanbul and, and just what God had done. And, 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 and I just began to ask her questions and here she's no longer got the, the black hair that she had, now she's got gray hair and she's got like, you know, just, bless you. <laughs> I thought that was a rebuke, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, that guy got gray hair. Anyway, so, uh, whew, uh, everybody okay? All right. <sighs> um, and, and so she, she began to just tell me all these stories, and, and I just remember sitting there just, just amazed, because here's this picture. She had, she had never gotten married, and she never had kids, and she didn't stay in suburbia, Oklahoma City, like most of my other friends. She had left everything, and she spent her life in Istanbul, and, and she, was, she was radiant. She was alive. She was infectious. She was quoting Bible verses. She was telling me stories of miracles. She was, she was I mean, it was, it was powerful. And I began to think about the intensity that she had in her 30s as a youth leader. And now here she is in her 50s. And it's really, it's really interesting to me when I think about each one of us living our lives, wanting to follow Jesus with everything, with, with maybe this cry in our hearts, these songs that we sing that you are worthy, you are worth everything, you're worthy of my life, you're, you're worthy of my affection. You're worthy of my time. You're worthy of it all. And I saw in this lady just this moment of what it looked like to as this young lady lead teenagers and say, Jesus is worthy in her young adult life. And, and in every season in her 40s, she's reaching people. And in her 50s, and I don't know about you, but I just for me, entered my 40s, and, I'm, and, and I, I'm looking at this next decade, and for me, saying, Jesus, I give you everything. You're worth my life. You're worth everything in my teens. It, it, it looks a certain way, and, and I can go back and remember what, what it meant to, to, to give all, and what I thought zeal looked like, and what I thought sacrifice looked like, and, and what, what Jesus was calling me to, and what my yes to God, what my, I'll give you everything in, in, in these years looks like, and, and then when I think about my 20s, it looked different, it, 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 was, it was a different season, it was, it was different yeses, it was, it was greater understanding, and there was a little more costly, and, and then I, I think about my 30s, and Kind of what the yes, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of my life in my 30s, what it looks like. And I was just thinking about now in my 40s in this next season of life, signing up again and saying, God, you're, you're, you're worthy of it all. You're, you're worthy in this next season. You're, you're worthy of my life. And I was thinking about for each one of us what it takes to get to 
where we, we look at a new year. We look at a new season of our lives. And that yes that you had maybe a year ago when you gave your life to Jesus, a decade ago when you gave your life to Jesus, maybe three or four decades ago, maybe when you were said yes when you were 15, or maybe when you said yes when you were 25, or maybe when you were 40, whatever it looks like for you, there's often times that yes, you can have it all. Jesus, you're worthy of my life. I surrender all. I have decided to follow Jesus. I give you everything. And just the slow temptation over time to take some of my wants back. Just to say, I don't know if I can, I don't know if you're worth all my money. I'm not sure you're worth all my time. I mean, after all, I've only got one life to live. I'm not sure you're worth all my treasure. I'm not sure you're worth everything. And tonight, I just, I just want us to come back and ask the Holy Spirit on a seek night where the radicals come out on fasting, seeking God, two and a half hour church. <laughs> and I want us just to come back and come to the Lord again tonight and for you to have a moment with God where you say, what does it look like to give you all in this year? What's it look like to give you all in this season? And I'm not talking about just the memory of yesteryear or last year's fast or or maybe in high school or college when you said, yes, salvation. I'm talking about, I'm talking about in your journey, in your relationship with Jesus, when it's just you and him, what it looks like right now to have a fresh revelation You're worthy of everything. I want to hold nothing back. I don't do fractions. I give all. I'm not going to give the Lord my God half my heart. I'm not going to love him with a third of my heart. I'm not going to love him with with nine-tenths. You can have it all, Lord. And only you and him. Only, I mean, that's it. We can sing the songs all, 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 all day long. And everybody applauds this external thing that we do. But only you and God know what's alive, what's going on on the inside. What, what, what's the condition? How, how much of your heart does he really have? And I, and I just want it just to, it's just you. I, I want to do it for me. I want to come before the Lord tonight and believing that the Holy Spirit speaks, come before him and just say, take inventory of my life. And what does it look like? Well, I'm in ministry. No, well, I, I, I'm, a, I, I, I'm in a leadership role at the church. Well, I've been saved for 25 years. No, no, no. I'm talking about right now in this new year, what it looks like to come before him and say, you're worthy. Like to have an encounter with God because the people that have encounters with God When we read about it in scripture, they don't like have an encounter and then be like, oh, I guess I don't have to surrender so much. No, Isaiah sees him and he goes, wow, it's me. I'm a man of unclean. It's a, (sighs) John sees him in Revelation 1 and he falls down as though dead. If you have an encounter with him, it's not going to be your license to give less. It's going to be your moment to go have it all. You're big, I'm small. God, and that's my dream. I love this environment because it gives us a moment to just come before him and have an encounter. My dream is that tonight he would come before him again and go, okay, I've been here before. Camp, I was here, retreat, I was here a decade ago, but it's fresh. Holy Spirit, Open up my heart. You're worthy of everything in this season, in this time, in this year, in 2020, in this, right now, and you can have it all. I wanna give you just a few portraits tonight of some people that said, take it all, take it all. Just a few biblical portraits, and I just, I want it just to be fresh where we come and say, he's worth it, he's worth all. Let's just read this one, famous one, Matthew 26. I'm gonna read the whole story here. It says this, while Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. 
When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? They asked disciples, why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Most Bible commentators say that Mary gave probably about a year's wages. So figure out what that would look like for you, what that would look like in your current life. And then I just want you to put yourself in the story and just begin to see what would it look like tonight if I came before Jesus and said, it's all yours, every minute, all my dollars. You're better than every potential idol. You're better than sports. You're better than vacations. You're better than houses and cars. You're first place. Actually, everything that I have, I already gave it to you. And you're, you're, you, you are worthy of more than my words. You're worthy of everything that I have. God, I give it all to you again. I just, I throw it out there and I say, you take it. You can, you can have it all. I was just thinking about in 2020, in this year, in this season where we're praying and fasting, we're coming before the Lord and, and saying, I, I'll give it, I'll give you everything. And, and I, of course, in this moment when the disciples, another gospel says, Judas, says, this is, this is a waste. And people are saying that to you right now. You're going to church on Wednesday night? You're fasting? You give to kingdom builders? You, what? You give away your time? You, you, and, and there's the, there's the why, why this waste? Why would you, why would you waste what you have? What, what, that, that goes on in your life right now. And so I just, I wanna invite you to more <laughs> I wanna invite you to just come before God and say, bring on the people that haven't seen what I've seen. Mary was the one in the moment as Jesus was about to go to the cross that recognized who he was and in the recognition of Jesus is, here he is, he's at that, this is my moment. She just goes, just, I'll just pour it out. I'll just pour it all out. And we've got this little window of time in whatever season of life you're in. Not to be strategic. Not to kind of figure out how much of my life can I give to God and still get away with withholding some fractions. But I just give it all again, God. I've got 70, 80, 90 years. My life is but a mere breath on planet Earth. And you can have it all. And Lord, you speak into my life. What area of my life, what area of my life have I not given all? Lord, what does it look like for me in this year to be a worshiper that beholds? If you'll behold more of who God is, if you'll see more of who he is, you'll be the person that says, I'll pour it out. If you behold more, if you see more, then you go, I'll gladly give. I gladly, I'll gladly pour out everything that I have. And I think that for, this is the beauty of Christianity. This is why I love your pastor. Your pastor speaks in terms of sacrifice and everything and one life and let's give it all. And it's not hold back. It's not, it's it's everything. And my dream is that we would just look at this year and say, God, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving to get. I'm not giving you my time to get. I'm not giving you my money to get. I'm, not, I'm giving you everything because you're worth all that I have. It's all yours. Use me, whatever ministry, whatever you call me to do. You'll, wh- whatever it looks like, where, wherever you call me to go, to leave what's comfortable. And my motive is not my own well-being. My motive is you're worth it. You're amazing. 
And I think we just need a little bit more of or just, just that awe. Wow, he is God. Sometimes we want to bottle it down to just how we can use God to get what we want. It's just that fresh, even as we're singing tonight these songs. You are worthy. My son Dawson, he's sitting here on the front row. And when he was eight, we were sitting on the front row of church. Offering bucket went by. He had $20 to his name. And uh, he had it in cash in his pocket. Offering bucket goes by, sitting in church. Eight-year-old boy, big brown eyes, brown hair, looks just like his mom. Puts $20 in the bucket. And uh, after church, we went to Walmart, and there was football cards. And uh, he looked at me, and he said, Dad, I want to get the football cards. I said, well, where's your money? He said, oh, I put it all, all in the offering this morning. And I said, well, then you don't have any money for football cards. And he goes, yeah, but I, I, I still want them. <laughs> and I... I got down on one knee so I could look at my eight-year-old son. Now he gets on one knee to talk to me. And <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, Doss. And I didn't say, hey, Doss, tell you what. I'm going to teach you what God's like. You put, you put in 20, I'm gonna, or 10, 20, I'm going to give you 10 times the blessing. Here's $200. I didn't do that. And I didn't look at him and say, Doss, yeah, you know, I'm just so proud of you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to buy you the football cards because I'm so, I'm so proud of the fact that you did that. I didn't do that either. I just looked at him and I said, I think Jesus is worth your $20. And he said, yeah, but then I don't have football cards. I said, that's okay. I said, do you have other football cards? Yeah, I do. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe what you did was, was worth it. And now he's 11. Maybe, or now you're, now he's, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> now he's 15. <laughs> that ruined the moment. He's 15. He could care less about football cards. Now he's into fashion. He's cool, right? Football cards, here's my point. I think when you just, there's just gonna be a moment where you throw crowns down. There's gonna be a moment where you behold forever. And all these little things that you're holding on to and not really giving him your dignity hold on to some of the future things that you want. I think there's gonna be some moments you go, what was I thinking? Why didn't I just give it all? Why didn't I just, why didn't I behold how awesome he is? And like Isaiah, just go, oh, wow, holy, oh, aye, aye, aye. I'm a, why, why not just fall down and you could, Jesus, you can have it all, you're, you're everything. Why not just give it all? I think that sometimes when I came to Christ in church world, sometimes there's so many times that we make promises to people where we say, hey, come to Jesus and your life will get better. That I think some of us come to Jesus and we're using him as a means to get our own end to get the good life. And I just wanna encourage you that eternity is the good life. And you come to Jesus for a relationship because of who he is. And no matter where it takes you, no matter if you get good days or the hard days, what you came in was for him. And I just picture Jesus when he's inviting disciples to follow him. He just invites them. And it's because of who he is. He doesn't look in Matthew 4 and say, hey, Hey, John, come follow me and I'll give you a better life than you got going here at Galilee with Zebedee. I, I got something better for you. Hang out with me. You're gonna meet Moses and, I, and Elijah. Hang out with me. 
I'm gonna multiply some bread and fish. You're gonna eat well, boy. <laughs> no, there's none of that. But we do that. Oh, you, but, but, but the invitation to follow from Jesus is just follow me because Jesus is worth following. Because Jesus is God. And so apart from our little challenges and things, and he does care. He cares about every hair on your head. He see every tear that you, all that. And I love that. It's one of my favorite things. But I don't follow Jesus to get the good life. I follow Jesus to get Jesus. I follow Jesus because because he's God and that relationship is worth following. I just imagine John on the island of Patmos. Jesus appears to him, Revelation 1, and he falls as though dead. He's not, he's not looking up going, was it worth it? Oh, I could have been still in Galilee. And Are you kidding? It's, it's gross as a mouth to even have the, the conversation. I, he, this is God. He invited me to follow him. He's, he's, he's Jesus. This is what lasts forever. And yet I know in my own life there's moments where I go, am I really going to give God everything? How do I get to where I really say, take it all? This, God, you're worth it. It's this revelation of who he is and what he's done for me. And this unending search to uncover who he is in the scripture, to behold him. When I sing the songs, I lock, for us to lock in with our minds who he really is. And when we read the scriptures, that we connect with a person, and we fill our hearts with the worthiness of the lamb, the worthiness of who he is. And as we gain that, then the overflow of our heart is, of course I give everything. I'm not measuring if or not. And, I, and we do that. As youth pastors, I did that. As youth pastors, sometimes I did like, you know, the moment where it's like, hey, come to church and we'll have a party. And you can eat cake, pop balloons with your butt, eat pizza, eat spiders. It's gonna be fun. And oh, we'll sneak in the gospel. And it never worked that way. It just, it, it never works. Here's what works. He's worthy of all and he asks for all. And if you give all, you'll never regret following the lamb. He's worthy of it all. He's, he's worth it. He's worth it. And when we, when we grow in it, when we understand it, then out of gratitude for who he is, out of gratitude for what he's done for us, gratitude of the gospel, we're like, yes, I'll give you everything. Yes, of course, Jesus, you can have it all. You're worthy of my life. There is no bank account that's not yours. There is no day that's not yours. I don't have a relationship that's not yours. Everything that I have, it belongs to you because you gave me new life. You are king. You are God. And that grows inside of us. It's, yeah, you can have it. As you recognize who he is, what he's done for you, transforms. We just came out of Christmas and Christmas season at my house uh, is a lot of shopping. I don't know what it's like for you, but my boy, Doss, I'm, I'm talking about him because he's with me tonight, and uh, it's, I really have no hobbies in life, so just parenting. So anyway, all my illustrations are children. People are like, do you golf? I struggle. Do you, I have no, I, anyway, so, so but, but, I was, but, but Doss uh, had a, a, a significant uh, problem in his life um, and one that was causing turmoil in our home uh, because he lost his AirPod case. And, um, <laughs> and so he came to us and he said, Mom and Dad, uh, I want to go buy a new AirPod case. And we said, how much is it? And he said, $80. For what? An AirPod case. Just the case, not the pod, just the case. Yeah, just the case. <laughs> so $80. Well, Doss, you, you, you have about $200, so this is about 40% of your net worth. Um, <laughs> you want the AirPod case? I want the AirPod case. We will not buy you an AirPod case. Well, I will spend my own money for an AirPod case. We don't think that's good stewardship of the, uh, to, to spend that way. I recognize that, but this is my money, and I want to buy it. We don't think you should do it. I really would like to do it. Renata said to him, Dawson, just give it three days. You just lost it. If you'll just give it three days, we'll probably find it. Dawson said, I don't want to give it three days. I need this AirPod case. So we went to the Apple store 
Dawson went in with Renata and uh, bought the AirPod case. And uh, we drove home as a family. It was family night. And uh, Adeline, my little girl that, out of all my kids, she's the one that looks like me. Mm, bless the Lord. And uh, <laughs> she's got blonde hair, blue eyes. She's short. She screams all the time. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and uh, we had been home for about four minutes when Adeline walks into the kitchen and says, I found an AirPod case. <laughs> and I looked at Renata. I call her P31 for Proverbs 31. I said, P31 knows best, Doss. And uh, Doss smiled. And so we went back as a family. And uh, <laughs> Dawson returns the AirPod case. And he goes in and he gets a fair exchange, right? I mean, he gives back the AirPod case and he gets back $80, the $80 that it's worth. And that's the way that we always think fair. We're Americans. We think fair exchange. I want you to imagine what the gospel is. I want you to imagine what you've received. I want you to imagine that this is not a fair exchange that you've received that's been given to you. Imagine if Dawson walked in, hipster, dressed in black, white tennis shoes, mm, skinny, <laughs> and he gives them AirPod case, and imagine if in response, not fair exchange, but mind-blowing exchange. Hey, young 15-year-old boy, we'll take that case, and we are going to give you the company called Apple. It now belongs to you. <laughs> every store, every device, every dollar, all stock, it belongs to you. In that moment, there is a 15-year-old boy that would have a mind-blowing response. Can't be true, right? Let me tell you this. What we've received, this thing called eternal life, this relationship, it's the mind-blowing exchange. And can you imagine the absurdity when we come to God and say, I ain't giving it all. I'm holding on. <laughs> Imagine if you could see what you've been given. If you could see who he is, the more that you have greater understanding, that's how, it, greater revelation in prayer as you pray and fast, in worship as you sing songs of who he is. Supernaturally, the Lord opens up your eyes that you could behold the glory of God, that you could recognize who he is and what he's done for you. Then the response of the heart is this mind-blowing, this great exchange is unbelievable. It's too good to be true. And I'll give you everything. I want to give all back to God. It's the simplicity for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I'm telling you, it's better than we can imagine. He's better than we imagine. What we get is we come before him and we bring our ashes. And it says in Isaiah 61, he gives us beauty. We, we come before him and we just, we, we come dead. And he says, I'll make you spiritually alive. You've, are, you've, you've got it all given to you by Jesus. When you got Jesus, you get new life. You've got a savior. You've got a king forever. Hallelujah. And imagine, imagine if we're just, if we're just holding on. No, the response is, is take it. Take it, God. 2020, I re-sign up again for all. You're worthy of it all. I sign up again. And yes, it looks different. Man, for me, you, all, when I was in ninth grade, <laughs> that meant, mm, I kiss dating goodbye. That meant I lead a prayer meeting and I obey my parents. Look different at 25. Look different at 35. Sometimes the memory of yesteryear is what we're still living on, and we've been living in compromise for quite a while. 
I just want you to come before God tonight and just be like a child. Have that fresh moment that say, every, every file in my mind belongs to you. Every affection in my heart belongs to you. Everything that I have, every ounce of energy, every dollar, every minute, time, talent, you're worthy of it all. You can have it. John doesn't say, mm, I'll give you some, I'll give you part. No, he falls down dead. Mary pours it out. It's Jesus. <laughs> what? This is not a waste. He's worthy. I just had a funny thing happen. My, uh, my parents, uh, my dad's one of my closest friends in the world. And my dad made a commitment when he was, when he, he had the shock of his life in 1976 where he expected to have one child, just me, but he had triplets. And, uh, I like to say that, um, well, I won't tell you that. I don't know if that might be. I like to tell my sisters that I'm the only one that um, my parents planned um, <laughs> because that's true. But anyway, and uh, my parents had the shock of their lives when instead of one child in there, there was triplets. And so three, and so if you don't know what a triplet is, it's the equivalent of being born in a litter. It's, <laughs> yeah. And so my parents had David Dana and Deborah, they thought that there was two up until after the second one was born. I was born first, God's choice. And then <laughs> four minutes later came Dana and then the doctor looked at my mom after 81 hours of labor and said, Debbie, uh, will you buy me, I don't know why I said this, but will you buy me a hot fudge sundae if I give you another baby? And my mom, after 81 hours, wanted to kill him. And <laughs> then... Deborah came out three pounds, and um, David, Dana, Deborah, and my dad, five years later, they had Dan, and uh, my mom's name is Debbie, my dad's name is Hal, and um, <laughs> yeah, and my dad had made this commitment, he's a pastor, and made this commitment to disciple his children, and my dad had walked with me my whole, my whole childhood, all my teen years, and spent a minimum of an hour a week sitting with me talking about uh, how to follow Jesus and what it looked like, and and so my dad uh, has been my, my, my dearest friend my whole life, and um, we're still close. We were FaceTiming last night, and, and, and it had a weird thing happen, and that is that uh, when Renata and I went to go travel uh, uh, last, in November, my parents came and watched our four children. And so uh, they're in their 70s, mid-70s, and uh, my dad, uh, uh, after, well, while I was gone, my dad texts me and says, uh, David, can I wear this shirt? Which is just bizarre because my dad is not a fashion guy. And he asked to wear a shirt. And I just thought about what, what, if the, what would the absurdity be if I said, nah, <laughs> that's my shirt, right? The, the, Here's what took place in my heart. Dad, you bought a new 1977 Oldsmobile station wagon when I was born for me. You bought three high chairs when we were born. You discipled me my entire life. You helped me get a car, 1988 Chevy Celebrity. Mm, what's up? Uh, you got, helped me get my first, you, you helped me go to college. You helped me go to seminary. You, you can't have the shirt. <laughs> no. Uh, the, the text back to my dad was, of course, of course. <laughs> you can have the, I got lots of shirts. I, I, I can't even, I, I could never begin to pay back. I could never, I could never. Whatever you want, you can have whatever, Dad. Why? Because ain't nobody given to me like he's given to me. Ain't nobody ever loved me when I was in my darkest day. When I was a 13-year-old kid and I was slammed into lockers, there was one dad that was locking eyes with me, discipling me. Speak life into me. Tell me who I am. And it's not just financial. It's relational. It's spiritual. There's not much, there's nothing my dad could say, hey, can I get, I, would, I wouldn't give. 
And I'm just telling you, in our lives, if we get, a, if we get just a fraction of who he is and what he's given us, eternal life, eternity with him, the response is, take it. You can have it all. That's what Paul says. Paul's life forever gets changed. Acts 9, beholds Jesus, life changes. When he comes to the end, as he's writing young Timothy, most scholars believe 2 Timothy is the last book that he wrote. And he says, pour it on my life like a drink offering. Pour it out. I just pour it out. It's all, it's all for you. It's all his. I finished the race, I fought the fight. I've kept the faith. A moment, you see him, Acts 9. A moment, you behold him. You go, I'll, I'll gladly give you everything. How, how David, how do I, how do I grow in that? Here's, here's, it's one prayer, it starts with just this. Paul prays it in Ephesians 1. It just says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened. Now that's a weird phrase. And most of us, when we hear that, we only think of open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my, and we have no idea what we're singing. We're just, uh, slow down. It's actually, it's before it was Hillsong, it was in the Bible. It's, it's this idea, Paul saying, oh, oh, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation that I might know you better. Open up the eyes of my heart that I might see it's the things of God. It's God at work, it's revelatory, it's God doing things inside of you. It's when you come before God and you pray and fast for 21 days, you come before God and you're seeking him, you're after God, it's these moments, it's these encounters that mean everything to us because they open up our eyes to see more. And when you see more, when you get, whether it's the scripture, sometimes it's in the scriptures and you, you behold more. Sometimes you're singing worship songs and you're declaring who God is and the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 5 says the Holy Spirit pours out the love of God into our heart. The Holy Spirit is at work and you don't even know exactly what's going on, but God is moving inside of you and you start to behold him more. The response is you're worthy of all worthy of everything. And I want to take a moment tonight and just ask the Lord for an encounter with Jesus that the worthiness of the lamb, right now, Lee said it a moment ago, right now the heavenly scene declaring worthy is the lamb. And when we come before him and we just say, let me see more, there's a reason why Angels around the throne declare holy. There's a reason why seraphim cry holy, why they fall down before him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Eternity backwards, eternity forwards, and in the present, they're crying holy. You and I, we're redeemed. We've been saved. We've got the opportunity to say, you are worthy and you have saved me. <sighs> and the overflow is not. I'm gonna hold on to my shirt. I'm gonna hold on to a little bit. The only response is, I gave you an AirPod case and you gave me everything. You can have it all, God. And sometimes if you hear that with only your head, the affection of your heart won't give all. But if you'll have moments where God reveals God to you, then it's supernatural activity where you go, I'm yours, I've beheld him. And you will live in a culture that will say, why this waste? Why are you spending a Wednesday night at church? Why are you serving all the time? Why are you saving your dollars to go to another part of the world to go take the gospel to those who have never heard? Why are you, why are you taking care of the poor in other countries? What, what, what's, why you go to that prayer meeting? You, you, your church has how many prayer meetings a week? You do multiple prayer meetings a day? You guys are weird. <laughs> Waste of your lunch hour, worth it. Waste of your money, worth it. Waste of your early morning, you could be running, <laughs> worth it. <laughs> you can have it all, Lord. You're worthy of it all. I wanna go old school church for a moment. And I'd like to invite you, if you're willing, to take a moment 
and just kneel at your chair or come on up here with me. Come right up here. And I'd like you to just have a moment where like Mary, you just say, I'm pouring it out. You're worth it. I give you my life again. I give you 2020. Whatever you ask of me, I'll give. You're worth all. And I mean it. Like, don't let this just be a moment where you just do it because other people are doing it. And I would ask you, even if you think you're too cool, like, oh, I'm not doing it. No, if you, I'm following. If you could say today, I give you, Jesus, I give you everything in 2020. I give you all. Take all of me. And you know that you can comb through the affections of your heart. And you know there's places where the Holy Spirit will highlight and say, I- I'm coming after that. I want all. And some of you resist moments like this because you know that there'll be a, a moment of conviction where the Lord will lead you. I wanna invite you, don't do that. Open up your heart. Get a posture that just comes before God and say, you're worthy. So if you would, just go ahead and either join me now or kneel at your seat. Father's Radiant Church in 21 days of prayer and fasting called Seek. We seek first God. Whatever you give us, the blessings we'll take, but we're not in it for that. We're in it for you. you first again. You're worthy. You loved us first. You're the creator. You're a father. You gave us new life. You've given us eternal life. You've changed us. You're our hope and you're our reward. You're our joy. You're our crown. You're our friend, you're our shield. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy. You can have my job. You can have my marriage. I give you my early mornings, give you my late nights. All that I have is yours. Holy Spirit, ask right now, Holy Spirit, just even as Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus, open the eyes of my heart that I might behold God. I want to see more. I want to encounter God more. I want to be closer.
It's not about me. I seek first God and give you everything again. <laughs> Have your way. We just give the Lord this rest of the fast season of seek. Just say, God, mark me in a supernatural way. Show me what you're doing. Show me what all looks like. Show me the hidden places that I'm holding on to, the fraction just won't give. You gave all. I give all. I give you my life. You're worth it. I love you, God. We surrender again. be with you than anywhere else. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.